Now, fans still await a full return to stadiums since government has only permitted a limited number of 2,000 spectators. With the country still under the state of disaster, government is yet to lift the current fan limit on stadiums. There are growing calls from sports bodies for more supporters to be allowed back into arenas. Now, joining us for more perspective on the matter is Calvin Watts, the owner of Capitalize Media. Very good morning to you, Calvin. Thank you for your time. So government has decided to extend the state of disaster for one more month until the 15th of April. Does it now really just rule out hopes of it happening anytime soon? Are fans returning in full capacity anytime soon? Or do you think there is still a little bit of hope that it can happen before the 15th of April? Look, I think certainly from a sports industry perspective, um, hope is not something we can we can continue to to live on. You know, we need some certainty in the industry. The, cert the industry's lived through a very difficult two-year period, um, and and we really can't go on like this. This is starting to have, you know, almost catastrophic results uh, for the sports industry across the board. And and if it doesn't move, I'm not sure the sports industry can see out another month. You know, the problem is as well we have major events coming up in the next couple of months and into some international events that are five, six months away. And if these situations don't change very, very quickly, I'm really very concerned about the future of many sports, sports bodies, both private and, mm. and sort of public federations and going forward, it's, it's, a, it's a major tragedy. It's, it's, it's really a massive issue. It is a massive issue, and you touched on the finances a little bit. What are the financial implications of, you know, fans not being at the stadiums in full capacity, particularly, as you mentioned, some big events? I mean, we have the Soweto Derby taking place about two weekends ago. There's the Pink ODI coming up soon, and many others. This could surely boost the current financial crisis. Absolutely. You know, what we call match day revenues, which is tickets and sweet sales and food and beverage sales and all the things that go around it are, are a massive income stream for the sports industry. But it's also very important for the product. You know, even the television product suffers when there's no people in the stadium. We've seen it with football numbers. We've seen it with rugby numbers. We've seen it pretty much across the board with, from a television audience perspective is that when there's, no, when there's no people in the stadiums, it takes away a lot of the atmosphere and the excitement around events. And you see the entire industry suffering. Um, there's, there's hundreds and, and, and thousands of people in the sports industry that earn their livings from sort of events, activations, yeah. who, are, who are simply not working and haven't been working now for two years. And it's, it's a really a major issue for, for the entire industry. A big issue for a lot of sporting coasts, Calvin, is development. And, you know, we know that there are smaller teams that actually depend on fans being in stadiums in order for them to have some sort of money to aid development. Is this something that also government could maybe look into? Well, absolutely. You know, we've already seen it from some of our major federations and federations that over the years have been very, very big investors in development have cut back dramatically on their development cricket. But, you know, for example, in the cricket world, mm. in rugby, a lot of tournaments and events that have previously taken place aren't getting funded to the extent that they did. So the implications for this are going right from the very top of our national teams right down to, you know, to the grassroots. It's absolutely having an impact. And one thing that you do need to understand is that the, the foundation of sport in this country is often on our youth and our school sports system. And without them having to have people in the stadiums, certainly over what we call festival season, you know, literally yeah. this Thursday, um, festival season starts in this country and goes till the end of April with, with festivals, you know, in the major cities and the rural areas in touch all over the country. And they really are financed by having people in the stadiums paying for parking, buying food and beverage, paying small ticket prices without that taking place. A lot of these events are not going to be sustainable and, and in fact might not take place this year again and many of them were really hoping and, and waiting and praying for an announcement last night for the sports industry and i think what's saddest is that there's absolutely nothing coming out of the out of the minister of sport in that department it feels like they've completely abandoned the sports industry and what is now becoming its its most direst need all right, Calvin, just one more question for you. You've done a lot of research into the sporting industry. What kind of repercussions does this have on athletes? We've heard already a lot of athletes talk about how difficult it was in the bio bubbles. Is it a similar effect on them with empty stadiums? They've said it's like, you know, being in a training session. We all know that having fans there cheering actually boosts a player on the field. Um, Absolutely. You know, I think that, you know, don't be surprised by what you see, not only from our own players, you know, people like Quinton de Kopp quitting and things like that. I think yeah. a lot of it's got to do with being in these bubbles and these bubble situations. We've seen the Indian cricket team struggle with it. Um, and I think it even gets worse when they get to empty stadiums. So the entire environment is just not conducive 
to exciting, vibrant sport, um, you know, which is which is really what sits at the heart of, of sport being in the entertainment format it has. So it's, it's having an impact on everyone involved in the industry at the moment. And, and you know, it's, it's something that I'm not sure we can wait another month. And certainly with the uncertainty that in another month, you know, nothing necessarily changes because we know that in another month we'll yeah. be going just into the Easter weekend. And we look back at what's happened previously going into Christmas and other holidays. These things tend to get extended. So... Um, I, you know, I, I can only say we are really, really concerned and mm. we need to see some action and that action needs to come very fast. All right. I know I said that was the last question, but I need to squeeze this one in very quickly. What are your thoughts on mandatory vaccinations? We've seen that happening in a couple of uh, sporting codes overseas. What are your thoughts on then having mandatory vaccinations in order for fans to return in full capacity? Well, I mean, look, I think obviously the opinions of, of mandatory vaccinations, I'm not, probably not qualified to give you, an, you know, I'll have a personal opinion. I obviously, <laughs> I, I firmly believe in it myself. Yeah. Um, but that's my personal opinion. I'm certainly not qualified to give you a medical opinion on mm, that. Mm. Um, you know, certainly I think it's one of the things holding us back, if I'm honest. I think it's one of the things that government's grappling with is can they make mandatory vaccinations part of the law for people attending sport? And I think that's one of the reasons that this government is struggling to deal with this situation from a sporting perspective, because there can be no other reason for them not to be opening up stadiums. Yeah, Here we sit in a society where kids are back at school, people in shopping centres, pubs, clubs, beaches, everything else is open except sports stadiums in this country. It makes absolutely mm. no sense. All right, Calvin, thank you so much for your time. We live in hope. That was Capitalized Media's Calvin Watt as fans impatiently wait for a full capacity return to stadiums. So